First of all, I, I ran a technical screen through through all of the uh, Dow 30 names. They almost all look great. There's a couple of exceptions that don't look terrible. They're just in no man's land. Merck would be in that in that bucket. Um, but you look at Goldman Sachs, it's already broken out. Like, if you missed that, you missed it. So what's next? I'm looking at uh, Travelers, TRV. I'm not in this name. This stock is on the verge of a massive breakout, uh, been consolidating for a while. It's really, it, it's really its own story. It's not macro or, or anything like that. It's just the company that the multiples have been compressed. People have not been excited about financial stocks. Now you've got uh, the, the, the yield curve uh, uh, expanding, and you've got this whole group of names, and Travelers is just one of them in the financial sector. Um, I own J.P. Morgan. That stock's up 50 points in like a month. Uh, outrageous performance there. Um, and then I own a bunch of other ones. I'm not like crazy excited about Verizon, but I'm in there. But I just feel, Scott, very strongly that the right way to allocate a portfolio is not to play this game. Monday, it's, it's growth. Tuesday, it's value. Wednesday, back to growth. You have to have both in your portfolio. And if you want to be somewhat tactical about it, then when you've got massive underperformance from one half of that equation, that's when you can rebalance and add to it and vice versa. When you get a huge spree for growth stocks, you can take some off and add to the value side. But this idea that uh, an investor should like pick a side and just stick to that through thick and thin and not enjoy the benefit of, of all sectors of, of the economy, I think is incorrect. I don't really know any professionals who actually do that in the real world. Yeah. No, I hear you. Uh, it's certainly your, your point is, is well taken. Dow highs today. Boeing, another new high. I mean, it's been like three days in a row that stock has led the Dow. I'm not sure if it's leading the Dow today. However, it is a new high today. Chevron, new high. Goldman, Visa, Dow, uh, all hitting new highs. Jimmy, Boeing. Um, you told us to buy it. Yeah. We were wondering how much upside was around. You know, it's, you had one week or two years this week yeah. that the 737 Max was grounded. Been talking a lot about this stock lately. Yeah, and, there, and there's good news that's been coming out. Um, United Airlines last week upsized its order for the 737 MAX, right? We know that's been the epicenter of Boeing's problems. Then you've got uh, also news reports coming out that Southwest Airlines is closing in on a deal for 737 MAXs again, and it looks like it's going to be a big order. Now, it's pretty likely that the price per plane is low for these orders, but that's okay because it clears out inventory. It gets their production lines really humming again. They've got tremendous overhead costs at Boeing, so they need to pump these planes out. Um, and once they get these initial orders out, then other airlines are going to say, hey, wait a second, we got to get back in queue here to get on the order train here, get our orders in the book. So it's something that should build in on itself. So barring any problems with the vaccine or reopening, barring any other technical problems with the planes, I think Boeing's easily going to be above 300 in a, in a matter of months here. Yeah, it seems like it's flying in that direction, pardon the pun. I mean, yesterday led the Dow, <laughs> I think, maybe the day before it led the Dow, and, and the guys, the producers in the back tell me that it is, in fact, leading the Dow today. Carrie, Visa is another one on my list today and on yours. Yeah, Visa has struggled over the past six months, and we're thrilled that it's starting to pop. Uh, it's definitely going to be a beneficiary of more spending. Uh, the same is true of MasterCard and American Express. We like Visa. It's one of our largest positions. PayPal is the other. And if you look at spending from the stimulus, there's going to be a lot more consumer spending. The reopening of all sorts of businesses. We're going to see business travel, business expense, corporate travel, vacation travel, and people are just anxious to have outlets for spending money. And digital and payment by credit card is the way that people are doing it. So that's definitely a, a stock that we like over the next year or two. Yeah, well, the market likes the optimism today from hey. Siegel and what it's hearing from you guys. Who's, who's, who's that, Josh? That's me. I just wanted to agree with uh, Carrie. I think she makes an important point. Um, there are stocks right now in the travel space. You don't have to, you don't have to own an airline uh, to get the benefit of what's about to happen. I heard it phrased, we're about to have uh, six months of New Year's Eve every night. That won't be me because I'm a very responsible uh, young adult. But I'm going to tell you, you look at some of these charts. You look at Expedia right now. Look at this monster, monster breakout. And it could be early innings for this breakout. This stock had been consolidating on a range going back to late 2015, has just taken out 
um, the, the high end of that range, and it is arguably the highest quality name in, uh, in travel and leisure. TripAdvisor, I've never owned this stock before. I don't own it now. I should. Um, they're building the Netflix of travel. This thing hasn't even broken out yet. This could be on the verge. They're doing a subscription travel service. Hasn't really been attempted before in a very tech-centric way. I'm fascinated by their idea. Bumble, this is a reopening stock. It really is. It might actually be the preeminent reopening stock of our generation. This thing just came public, reported a blowout number last night, gave incredible guidance, uh, forward guidance, 12 billion market cap, 700 some odd million in expected revenues this year. I know it's not a quote value stock or cyclical stock. It's going to work if the reopening works because there's huge pent up demand for people to get out there and meet other people. And it's not just dating. It's friendship. It's business contacts. This could be the next great brand in, in social networking. So there are a lot of names out there that are just starting to move higher or haven't even yet that are going to play into what Carrie just said. And I think it's a very, very important topic. It defies the growth versus value paradigm. Mm. That's not what's important yeah. now. Yeah. What's important is the reopening.